Hello and uh, welcome to uh, Antarctica, uh, Greenland, Iceland. Uh, <laughs> good grief. Lord, what's going on with our weather? Golly. You know, I, I realized that last week when, when we read Peter, I, I think I mistranslated him. He said, uh, don't be surprised when we go through, I said fiery ordeals, but I think maybe the better translation is icy ordeals, right? So, uh, how are you doing? Did you, did you make it through the ice storm? I, you got any trees left? You got any leaves on trees? Oh, all joking aside, I, I do hope and pray that, that none of you uh, suffered exceedingly and that, that there were no damages to roofs or cars or heads. Um, so I'm going to thank the Lord that, that the ice is gone and, and we're, we're back at CBS. So let's open in a prayer. Father, um, maybe we're wimps down here in Texas. Um, it, I know people up north go through this all the time, but I, I confess I wasn't ready for it and I'm ready for summer. So, uh, Father, thank you that, that today was pretty and you brought the sun out and I encourage our plants and encourage our, our souls that, that after the storm, there is beauty, right? Uh, after the, after the suffering, there is glory. So, Father, we ask that you be with us tonight, that you be the speaker, that the words that are said would be your words, that what we hear with our ears we might understand in our minds and believe in our hearts. We ask, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. So, let me ask you a question. You like TV reality shows, competitions, The Voice? Uh, my, my wife loves the voice. Uh, America's Got Talent. American Idol. A while back on one of those shows, and I've forgotten which one it was, but, but there was an inspiring person who came on as a contestant. It was a young man. Uh, his name was Emmanuel Kelly, and, and he came on to sing, and he showed up... Uh, as, as God allowed him to be born without uh, all of his limbs. Uh, he had partial limbs and uh, partial fingers, but uh, had a gorgeous voice. And they asked him what he was going to sing, and he said, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sing John Lennon's song, Imagine. You know how it goes. You, you've heard it many times. Imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. No hell below us, above us only sky. Imagine all the people living for today. Imagine there's no countries. It isn't hard to do. Nothing to kill or die for. And no religion to. Imagine there's no heaven. How a young man could sing that song. How so many people could, could think that's a beautiful song without even, without even listening or reading or understanding the words. You know, if life for a follower of Christ is full of trials, then how do we live faithfully, waiting for his return? In today's post-Christian world, people need leaders. They need you. You're a leader. Whether you've accepted the mantle or not, it's on your shoulders, and you're a, you're a leader. Whether it's for one or, or for a hundred or for a thousand, you're still a leader. And, and so we lead as best we can. We, we, with the hope of the future to come with the hope of heaven and with, with the help of the Holy Spirit, we live life as followers of Christ, as examples for others, relying on the triune God, awaiting, awaiting his glory. 
We lead as, as God, as Jesus commanded Peter to do in John chapter 21, three times. Jesus asked Peter, do, do, do you love me? Three times Peter says, yes, I do. And three times Jesus responds, feed my sheep. If you love me, feed my sheep. If you love me, take care of my sheep. I think that's why Peter doesn't end his first letter with the end of chapter 4. So then those who suffer according to God's will should commit themselves to their faithful creator and continue to do good. And there's no break there. There's no break there in his letter. To the elders among you, I appeal as a fellow elder, a witness of Christ's sufferings and one who will share in the glory to be revealed. Be shepherds of God's flock. He's talking to me. He's talking to you. He's talking to all of us. Tonight's lesson is about shepherding Christ's flock. And the main idea throughout this is to be a good shepherd. We ask what? What is, is this? A lesson about reflecting the good shepherd. We ask so what? And, and it's a lesson about relying on the chief shepherd. And then we ask now what? And it ends with receiving a crown. Good shepherds receive a crown. Isaiah wrote the words of God when he said, we like sheep have all gone astray. We need shepherds. We need good shepherds. What's a big deal about sheep? I read a short book by Mary Glenn Peoples a long time ago, and she pointed out some things that I didn't know about sheep. Hey, I'm, I'm from Houston. I'm a, I'm a city boy, and I'm not a farm hand, but she, she wrote these facts about sheep. First of all, sheep are not trainable. And I thought that that's true. Have you ever, have you ever seen a trained sheep in the circus? <laughs> I don't think so. They, they don't learn from their mistakes. They're not trainable. Secondly, they have to be led, not driven. It's, it's kind of like if you've got a, a piece of string and you want it you want to move it from one end of the table to the other. You, you can't push it, right? It just all crumbles up. Instead, you have, to, you have to lead that string to the other side of the table. That's the way sheep are. They have to be led, not driven like cattle. When a sheep is on his back, he can't get up. Literally, that's true. Shepherd has to come over and grab him by the feet and flop him up on his feet and, and pick him up. He, he can't... He can't pick himself up. You know, I, I think there's never been a time when the, the New York Times bestseller list did not include a book on self-help. Why not the Bible? <laughs> and, and sheep can't carry burdens. It'll break their back. Worry, depression. <laughs> it'll, it'll break a sheep's back. And sheep are defenseless. We know that. They, they, they can't defend themselves against the lions that prowl around waiting to devour them. Sheep need shepherds. Sheep need good shepherds. And to reflect the, the good shepherd, then shepherds uh, must shepherd God's flock, serving as overseers, not because you must, but because you are willing as God wants you to be not greedy for money but eager to serve not lording it over those entrusted to you but being examples to the flock it, re reflecting the good shepherd requires three things first of all a right motive secondly a right attitude and third a right action in in verses in, the, they're all three there in in verse two. First of all uh, a right motive requires not, not because you have to, but because you want to. Being a good shepherd says, I, I want to do this, not I have to do it. It's willingness, as Peter says. It's like the woman who, who tried to rouse her husband out of, out of bed. He's sleeping late on the morning. She says, you got to get up. You got to get up. Come on, don't be so lazy. He says, look, woman, give me three reasons why I need to get up. She says, okay, first of all, it's Sunday morning. 
We ought to be in church. Se secondly, it's 40 minutes until church service starts. You got to get up and get going. And third, listen, you're the pastor. <laughs> so right motive requires willingness. And secondly, it requires eagerness. Being a, a good shepherd is, is not because you're paid to do it, but, but because you get to do it. Not for personal gain, not for money or power or prestige, but with contagious enthusiasm. As, as Paul says to the Colossians, right? Uh, serve, work, work as though you were working unto the Lord, not man. With en contagious enthusiasm. And, and third, willingness, eagerness, and meekness. Not not exerting the power of position, but passion for people. And, and again, you've heard me say this, meekness is not weakness. It's not being a wimp. The word for meek in the Bible means power under control, having the, the power of God under control of the Holy Spirit. Listen, guys, being a good shepherd means your life is a sermon. Every day you're preaching a sermon by the way that you act because you're your actions speak louder than your words. Have the right motive and have the right attitude. Peter says, all of you clothe yourselves with humility toward one another because God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. We've learned that being submissive is, is being subordinate voluntarily, yielding to a higher authority Choosing to yield your will, your wants, your desires, your opinions to God's word and God's will. We can do it. Jesus did. And humble yourselves, Peter says, therefore, under God's mighty hand that he may lift you up in due time. Humility. Humility first to God and then to others. As Peter says, God hates pride. The truth is, is that the person wrapped up in herself makes a very small package. Humility is not thinking poorly of yourself. It is not thinking of yourself at all. Reflecting the good shepherd requires a right motive, a right attitude, and a right action. We, we read Peter's words and he says, uh, cast all your anxiety, anxiety on God because he cares for you. I, I think this means being joyful, not anxious. This word cast, I, I put it under action because it, it's, it's to throw, to cast upon like, like a casting, casting a fishing line out there. Uh, that's what this means. It's, it's not being anxious about anything, but in everything by, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, let your concerns be known to God and the peace of God, which passes all understanding. Well, help us be good shepherds. Be joyful and be ready. Be ready. Ooh. Be ready throughout this. Peter said, don't be surprised at the trials we're going through, but be ready. Be ready, self-controlled and alert, because the devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. So resist him, standing firm in the faith. Be ready. Look, Satan, Satan's purpose is, is not only to make us suffer, but also to make us turn away from God. So he says, resist him and turn toward God. We're commanded to be a good shepherd. <laughs> We're commanded to uh, take the advice of Waylon Jennings and not Willie Nelson. <laughs> that great theologian Willie Nelson writes to us about 1 Peter 5. and He says, my heroes have always been cowboys. 
and they still are, it seems, sadly, in search of and one step in back of themselves and their slow-moving dreams. <laughs> well, his good friend Waylon, Waylon Jennings seemed to, to agree with Peter more than willing. When Waylon writes, you know what I'm about to say, right? <laughs> Mamas, don't let your babies grow up to be cowboys. Don't let them pick guitars or drive them old trucks. Let them be doctors and lawyers and such. Mamas, don't let your babies grow up to be cowboys. And I think maybe somewhere in that song, he says, make them be good shepherds in the mold of Jesus Christ. So are good shepherds lonely leaders? Mm, no, not if they rely on the chief shepherd. I love it. Where, where Peter says, humble yourselves under God's mighty hand that he may lift you up. God will lift you up as a good shepherd. He, he did so to Moses. He did so to Joshua. He did so to David. He did so to his son Jesus, and he will do so for us. And Christ will restore you strengthen you, confirm you, and establish you. The God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. He will restore you. The word here means to perfect, to mature, to make complete. He will strengthen you. You know, suffering is the weight room where spiritual muscles are grown. And he will confirm you. We know that pressure turns carbon into diamond. Good shepherds are diamonds. And he will establish you. He will help you be steadfast, rooted as a, as a straight-up oak, not a bent-over oak that falls down the ice, but as a straight-up oak that survives the ice storms and the fiery trials. So be a good shepherd. So now what? Imagine there's no heaven. No. Good shepherds are promised to receive the crown of glory. Eight times in Peter, the word glory follows the, the word suffering. In the Bible, the, the cross always precedes the crown. For many of us to enter college, we had to pass the ACT to, to, to share in the glory, to be revealed when Christ returns. Uh, we need to pass the ECT. We need to be potatoes, not eggs. Look, an egg goes into boiling water soft, but comes out hard. A potato goes in hard and comes out soft. So we ask, how am I responding to the trials God has sovereignly allowed into my life? Am I submitting or am I resisting? I think if we re re uh, submit to Christ, he will soften our hearts and give us both hope and holiness. Be a potato and not an egg. An ECT. Expect, count, and trust. As Peter has told us over and over again, expect what's going to happen. Expect to suffer. Expect trials. And ask, what am I to learn? Not why me, but, but why me? What am I to learn? How is this trial designed to make me grow, to make me mature, to make me better? And count. Count it a privilege, an honor to be able to suffer as Christ did, to be, to be called to be on his team and trust. Trust that the Lord, Lord will work it in you to make you better and not better. Peter has told us this world is not all there is. This is not as good as it gets. There is a heaven, an end to suffering, a time when Jesus will make all things new, make all things whole, make all things complete. Emmanuel Kelly is the reason, is the reason for chapter 3, verse 15. 
is why we should always be ready to explain to Emmanuel Kelly's of the world why we have this hope in our hearts. Oh God, there are lots of Emmanuel Kelly's out there and they have no hope because they don't yet know Jesus. Imagine, imagine there is a heaven. It's easy if you try. No hell awaits us. Above us only Christ. Imagine all the people living for today. Imagine no possessions. I wonder if you can. No need for greed or hunger, a brotherhood of man. Imagine all the Christians sharing all the world. You may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you'll join us, Emmanuel, and we will live with him as one. Peter begins his letter with grace and peace, and he ends his letter with grace and peace. It is because of God's grace that we receive God's peace so be a good shepherd. Be a good shepherd. And as Peter tells us, reach over to the person next to you and greet them. Greet them with a kiss of love. Let's pray. Holy Father, on our own, we would not be good shepherds. So we come before you and implore you and ask you to fill us with your spirit so full that you would make us good shepherds, not for our own selves, but for the Emmanuel Kellys in the world, that they may see our actions and hear your words and trust your son in whose name we pray. Amen.